Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys the steps of setting up a animated door inside of the Unity game engine. So you can see that when I step into a triggering zone, the door will be triggered to open, and when I leave that zone, the door automatically closes. So let me talk a little bit about the setup of this door, and then I'll recreate the same steps with a different door. So as you can see in the hierarchy, this supermarket door is a game object itself. I'm not building it on the tile map like everything else you see in the scene because this game object is going to need its own scripts. So I have a triggering door script. I have a box collider, which if I expand, you'll see that this is set to is trigger mode. There's no need to give the object a rigid body because we're only using this box collider for triggers. So you can see the region where when a player enters is set to here, and that causes the door to be set to open mode. Otherwise, when there is no player inside of here or the player leaves, then it's told to be in close or it's idle state. So if we take a look at the animator controller, I have it set up to look just like this. There are three animation states, idle, which is just what you see here on screen, a single frame where the door is closed. Then a transition can be made to open when the door open condition is set to true. We do that with a script. Has exit time is turned off and the transition duration is also set to zero, which means that the switch from idle to open will happen immediately as soon as this condition door open is set to true. So once the door is open, and this is a non-looping animation, so it will stop when the door is completely open, it can transition back to close when door open is set to false. And this will only occur when the door is already fully open, so has exit time at one means this animation door open has to finish before door close can start. And door close will play once, and once that is done, it will just simply return to the idle state automatically at exit time of 1, which means that the door close animation has been finished, and then it returns to idle, where if door open is set to true, it can return to open. So it's just a loop here. And the only parameter you need for this setup is a boolean setting whether the door should be open or closed. So I'm calling that door open here. I can go ahead and show each of these animations individually. So door idle single frame door open which does not actually loop if we uh, click on the animation itself let's see door open you can see that loop time is turned off it's also turned off for door close and then door close same deal here you also notice that the samples are set to 10 which means 10 frames per second so each sprite frame only plays for a tenth of a second or 100 milliseconds okay so now let's dive into the script a little bit if i open up my trigger door script then you'll see that it's pretty simple and straightforward here. So trigger door is built on another script I have called detection zone. So the trigger door part is just to set the Boolean parameter on the animator. So you need to find the animator component on the game object, which you can do with get component animator. And then when the condition is met, the detected objects inside of the detection zone is greater than zero. Then we allow the door to open here setting the door open to true otherwise the count is going to be zero so we're going to take the boolean and set it to false because the door should close the idea is simply that if the door does not detect that there's someone there it should just keep itself shut so this is built by extending another script i have detection zone so this is also very simple this just handles the player detection part so i'm picking up the player by using the tag player so in unity Game objects have a bunch of default tags, including player. So this is a simple, easy one to use. So whenever you're using a Collider 2D, but in trigger mode, you need to create a function in one of your scripts on trigger enter 2D or on trigger exit 2D in order to respond to a object entering or leaving that box collider zone. So in this case, as I mentioned, we're checking the tag of the game object. So collider.gameobject.tag is going to reference whatever you have up here for the game object. So if I click on player, we can see that this has the player tag. And in separating different characters like this could be helpful. Maybe you don't want a monster or an NPC to trigger opening the door. So only having player tags trigger it could be helpful. But that's just one of many ways of differentiating the game objects which actually enter your door area. So uh, once the player is detected, we add it to the list. And if the player ever leaves the area, then we just remove it from the list. So once again, as I mentioned, if the number of players is greater than zero on the list, then we open it. Otherwise, we close it. And that's all the scripting we need in order to make the animation open and close for our doors. 
So I'll go ahead and take one of these other doors I created and uh, turn it into a opening and closing door. So I'm going to start by clicking on the artwork and separating the sprites. So in sprite mode multiple, I can go into sprite editor, slice it by the number of frames. So we have five here. So grid by cell count, five columns, columns go top down, one, two, three, four, five, slice it. And now you can see we have five different frames for our animation. So I'll apply that. And now we can take these frames in order to build out the animation. I'll start by dragging the closed frame of the door onto the scene to use as a game object. So this will create the game object automatically with a sprite renderer attached. I'll position it where it should theoretically be. And you can enable snapping if you need it to snap to the exact pixel. So next we need a animator component and that's gonna take a runtime animator controller. So if you already have an animator controller created and the only thing you need to do for a new object is replace the sprite frames, then a good idea is using an animator override controller. So you can just replace the animations, but the animator controller logic stays the same with the idle closed and open states of the door. So I'm going to right click in this folder and create a new animator override controller. And I'll just call this AOC, let's see, yellow mart door just to specify what it's for. I'll click on the Mart and let's drag the animator override controller into the slot. Also rename the game object, yellow Mart door, and I'll drag this into the folder for prefabs. Okay, now if I jump into the animator with the yellow Mart door selected, you'll see we have the same animation logic, the same parameters here, but what we need to change is the animations. So what we could do is just take these three and control c to copy them control v paste them in the same folder then i'm going to take the yellow mart door name i'm going to copy that and i'm going to rename these animations to be yellow mart door close yellow mart door idle and yellow mart door open you can use whatever naming scheme you want now to make sure that the animator override controller is actually using these animations i'll click on the yellow mart animator override controller I'll drag animator controller door into the original controller up here and you'll see the original animations now need to be replaced with the new ones. So let's put this folder in list mode for a second so I can see the names of the animations and then I'll just drag each corresponding one into the override animation slot. So yellow mart door close replaces super mart door close. Idle replaces idle and open replaces open. Now if we click on yellow mart door and the animation window. You may need to go up to window animation to open these windows. Then you can see that we have the original sprites from the first animation, and we just need to replace these with the new artwork. So I will expand yellow mart door yellow PNG, and let's bring in the animation frames. So since we're doing the closing animation, four is gonna go here to the first slot because that was the last one. And then we'll do three, two, one, and zero. And then I'll just delete this last keyframe over here because this animation only has these five frames. So I'll hit play and you can see the closing animation there. So we just replaced the same steps for idle now and then close. So idle just is gonna use frame zero here, the uh, closed state, and then open. We just take these five frames in sequential order, drop them in here and delete the last frame because once again, it's only five frames for this animation. And you can use as many frames as you want uh, if you're gonna make your own artwork. The more frames of animation, the smoother it's going to look. So there's our open, there is our close, and there's our idle, which is the default state. And you can also see that it's the default because entry will be connected to your idle state. And if you ever need to make a animation state your default, just right click on it and do set as layer default state. It's like this. But of course we want it to start at idle where it's just gonna be closed. So now what we're missing from this game object is the script. So I'm gonna add component trigger door, which is exactly like it is for the other door. Uh, we're still using the same tag target. We're still using the same open door animator parameter name, which is one way that using animator override controllers is kind of handy here because all the parameters are the same. So we don't need to worry about customizing everything, just changing the animations. Also, uh, click here and apply this to the prefab. So really I should be editing on the prefab. So in the hierarchy, 
click the little arrow to jump into the prefab. And let's add the last thing we need, which is the box collider 2D. It doesn't have to be a box collider, whatever shape you want to use for the detection zone. But uh, with this type of top down game, box colliders work really well. So let's use edit collider here. So let's check is trigger because it's not a physics collider. It's only meant for detecting if something is in the zone and then edit collider. You'll see that it will default to the shape of our sprite, but we actually want this to be below the sprite. So something like this. And I'll also expand it out to the sides a little bit. Just whatever you think would be a reasonable detection zone for picking up when the door should open and when it should close. That is completely personal preference. So as long as we have the box collider there on is trigger mode, then trigger door will use this box collider. And now we can go ahead and hit play and you'll see that we have another door which opens and closes pretty much the exact same way as our main supermarket door entrance. So they use the same script and the same logic. You just have to put in your own animations and define your box collider zone for each one. And that is pretty much the idea of how you set up the animations for a door inside of Unity 2022. So I've been Chris. I hope this tutorial was helpful for all of you out there. Thank you for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.